Hi, welcome back to Recitation. In lecture, you've been learning about triple integration, and I have a nice average value problem for you using triple integration here. So what I'd like you to do is, is to consider the tetrahedron that has vertices at the origin and at the points 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So that's one point on each of the positive axes, so at distance 1 from the origin. So it's taken the liberty of drawing it here for you. Um, so consider that tetrahedron. Uh, the solid tetrahedron. And what I'd like you to do is find the average distance of, a, of, a, of the points in that tetrahedron from the xy plane. All right, so I'd like you to compute that, the average value of the distance as the point ranges over the whole tetrahedron of, of, its, of its distance from the xy plane. Um, so why don't you pause the video, spend some time working that out, come back, and we can work it out together. Hopefully you had some luck with this problem. Let's get started. So you know for an average value problem that, that if you have a function f, so the, the average value of a function f over a region r is going to be it's 1 over the volume of the region times the triple integral over your whole region r of the function value f of x, y, z uh, with respect to volume. So you know, uh, in any order you want. So I guess I'll write dv here. And then, you know, to evaluate this, you, you set it up as an iterated integral. So in our case, the function we're trying to find the average value of is the distance between a point and the xy plane. But that's, that's an easy function, right? That's just z. For any, for any point in space, it's, its distance from the xy plane is just its height, its, its z value. So the function that we're seeking to find the average value of is z. And so most of the work of this problem then is going to be in figuring out what the bounds are and then doing the actual integral after that. Um, so OK, so let's, so let's think about the bounds. Now, you can integrate. This tetrahedron is a, is a nice, reasonably simple geometric thing, object. Um, so in fact, it doesn't matter too much which, which order you take your bounds in. So I think I'm going to do it in the order dz, dy, dx. You know, I'll do z first, and then y, and then x. But it doesn't matter. If you did a different way, it'll probably work out very similar overall. And, and, and you'll, you'll still be able to compare the overall process. So let's, so let's think about z. Yeah? So in this tetrahedron, um, as, as the, the, so we want z, we want to integrate with respect to z first. So we look at this tetrahedron and we say, OK, at a point x and y, you know, when we choose the x and y values, what's the sort of lowest surface? What's the smallest value z can take? And what's the, the upper surface? What's the largest value z can take? So the lowest surface here is the xy plane. That's the bottom face of this tetrahedron. And for any point, for any choice x and y, the lowest value z can take is when it's, when it's in the xy plane, so when it's equal to 0. So, so the boundaries. So this is going to be equal. So in our case, so let's set this up. So it's going to be an iterated integral. The function we're integrating is z. And I said we'll do dz dy dx. And we just said that, OK, so the lowest value that z takes, the dz, is 0. So the up highest value that z takes is when it hits this, this top surface, this plane that passes through the points 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. All right, so we need to know the equation of that plane. Luckily, that's a pretty easy plane to write down the equation for. Um, so this slanted surface, so this slanted plane passing through the, the three vertices other than the origin is the plane x plus y plus z equals 1. All right, so it's a, it's a nice easy plane to work with. And so what we want to know is what's the value of z on that plane. And so OK, so we, we isolate z on one side and we bring everything else over. So we, we have that, that, that top value of z, the largest value of z that z can take when x and y are fixed, is 1 minus x minus y. So that's what goes up here, 1 minus x minus y. So that's the biggest value z can take. OK, good. So now we need to figure out what the bounds on y are in terms of x. So what I like to do in this case is I like to draw 
a projection of your of your surface. So then you're in in a sort of two-dimensional world, and then you can look at that image more easily. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this tetrahedron, and we're going to imagine projecting it down into the xy plane. So for every point in the tetrahedron, we're going to draw a dot below it in the xy plane, and we're going to look at that set of dots. Um, so that what that's going to give us is, is this, this, in this case, it's going to give us this bottom face of the tetrahedron. Every point of the tetrahedron is above its bottom face. That's not true for every tetrahedron, but it's true for this one. Um, so the region that we're interested in is that bottom face. So I'm going to draw another picture of it over, over on my left here. So that region is the, it's the region that has vertices 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, and, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1. So it's this triangle. And this bottom edge of the triangle is the line y equals 0. This left edge is the line x equals 0. And this um, slanted line is the line x plus y equals 1. OK, so this is that, this is that same bottom face that we just drew. But now I've, you know, I've changed my axes to our usual two-dimensional direction, x and with x to the right and y up. OK, so we need to figure out now, so we're doing dy next. So we need to figure out for a fixed value of x, what are the bounds on y. And so, OK, so we see from this picture that for any, for any fixed value of x, y goes from 0, this, the, the x-axis, up to this line. OK, so, so on, on the x-axis, y takes the value 0. And on this line, y takes the value 1 minus x. Finally, our, our outermost uh, variable of integration is x. And so we need to know what are the absolute largest and smallest values that x take, um, that x takes. So we, OK, so we can do that looking either at this picture or looking at our original picture. Either way, it's, it's not hard to see that x just goes between 0 and 1. The smallest value that x takes in this tetrahedron is 0. The largest value it takes is 1. So that's our integral that we have to compute. So that's not that bad at all. So now you have to go through and you have to actually integrate this. Yeah? And so I'm going to. You know, look at my notes just to make sure I don't make any big arithmetic mistakes. Um, so let's see. So we've got, so we, now we do these one at a time. So this innermost integral is an integral of z dz. OK, well, that's easy. That's z squared over 2. And then we're taking z squared over 2 between 0 and 1 minus x minus y. So this innermost integral is z squared over 2 between 0 and 1 minus x minus y. So that's equal to, so the innermost integral gives us um, 1 minus x minus y squared over 2. So that's what we get for the innermost integral. So our integral that we're looking at then is equal to, well, it's the integral as x goes from 0 to 1 of the integral as y goes from 0 to 1 minus x of this integrand. So this was the inner one. Let me write that inner. That's what I've got here. Just integrating z with respect to z gives me z squared over 2. And then I evaluate it at the bounds of the integral. OK, so now I need to do the middle one. So let's do that up here. So I need to compute, so this is the middle integral. So I need to compute the integral. So now I take the bounds. So the middle one is y, and the bounds are from 0 to 1 minus x. 0 to 1 minus x of the inner integrand. So this thing that I just, the inner integral, this thing that I just computed. So that's of 1 minus x minus y squared over 2 dy. OK, so um, all right, so this isn't that bad. This is a, a quadratic polynomial in y. Um, and so it's not terribly hard to see I'm sort of running out a little bit out of board space, so I'm not going to you know, give you a full um, detailed explanation. But it's not hard to see, I think, that, the, that this integral, this, that the integral of 1 minus x minus y squared over 2 is 1 minus x minus y, with respect to y, of course, of, of, is 1 minus x minus y cubed over 3, but it's negative because the sign here is negative. And you could check by differentiating this and seeing that you get that. And OK, so we have to evaluate that as y goes from 0 to 1 minus x. Um, so what do we get? Well, when y is equal to 1 minus x, 
this is 0. So we get 0 minus, and when y is equal to 0, this is minus 1 minus x quantity cubed over 6. So this is, so it's minus minus 1 minus x cubed over 6. So that's just 1 minus x cubed over 6. And so finally, the outer integral, outermost integral, is we you know, take the inner two integrals and we integrate them with respect to x as x goes from 0 to 1. So it's the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x cubed over 6 dx. And that's going to equal, all right, I've run out of space. So that integral is 1 over 24. All right, except I've done something wrong right at the beginning. I hope you all caught me, right? I had this 1 over v factor here, and it disappeared. Right? I forgot about this 1 over v. So over here, I should have written a 1 over v right in front of that integral. And so what that means is that 1 over 24, so OK, so I've computed, I've correctly computed 1 over 24 as the value of my triple integral. But the average height here isn't 1 over 24. It's 1 over 24v. All right. So, so the average height is 1 over 24v. So we need to go and we need to look at our tetrahedron and figure out what its volume is. So if we come over here, see our tetrahedron. Now this is a nice, simple tetrahedron. Volume of a tetrahedron is 1 half, no, 1 third the area of the base times the height. Right? Um, so this is a nice, easy tetrahedron. Its height is 1. Its base is a right triangle whose legs are both 1. So the base area is 1 half. So the volume is 1 sixth. All right, so if the volume is 1 sixth, we said the average value is 1 over 24v. So that works out to 1 over 4. So let me write that just in this space. So the average height then is 1 over 4. So that's going to be our final answer. OK, so let's just recap briefly what we did. We had an average value problem that we started with. So we use this general formula for average value problems. When you have a, a function f that you want to take its average value of over a, over a region r, what do you do? Well, you take 1 over the volume of the region times the triple integral of your function f with respect to volume over that region. OK, so this is, this is the average value in general. In our particular case, the, the function was the height. It was z. Um, and then you have to set about choosing the proper bounds for your integrals. So in this case, um, you know, you, so you choose some order of integration based on the region. In this particular case, it's a nice, simple region. It doesn't matter too much what order you choose. Um, so you have, uh, so I chose dz, dy, dx. Uh, and then what does that mean? So for the innermost one, you look at your original solid. So I'm going to go back and look at this picture again. So for your innermost variable, you say, so if it's z, you say, OK, so when I fix x and y, what's the bottom surface and what's the top surface for z, you know, when I solve that for z in terms of x and y? So here that was that the plane z equals 0 and the plane z equals 1 minus x minus y. So that explains my bounds over here, why they were 0 and 1 minus x minus y. Then when you go to your next variable, in this case it was y, what do you do? Well, you, you first you project to, to eliminate this first variable. So you project your region down. Well, down in this case because it's z. So you project in the z direction. And you draw the sort of shadow of your region. So this is what I drew here. This is the shadow of my region in the xy plane after I projected it. And then you do the same thing. So now this is back in just like what you did when you had to find bounds for double integrals um, when you write, wrote them as iterated integrals a few, a few lectures ago. Um, so, OK, and so then you do the same thing. So then, you know, in this case, I was next integrating with respect to y, so I needed to find the bounds on y with respect to x. So I needed to look in this picture at the bottom edge and the top edge of this region. And, OK, and then your outermost variable, you look at its absolute bounds, so the largest and smallest value it takes on the region. So then, OK, then you have an iterated integral, and you evaluate it by successive integrations. OK? So that was what we did. We just did the, the, the three integrals starting from the inside and working our way out.